What's up guys? Welcome back to another Team Solomon Circus live video. Today we're going over Labyrinth deck profile. This is a deck that I've been playing off and on for a bit. I know I've been on Fire King for a while, or I guess Snake Eye now, um, for a bit, and I also was on Branded as well as Unchained before, but this is one of my favorite decks, especially now that we are mixing with the Unchained. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll just be showing off a little bit of why I play some cards and what certain cards do. But I'll be living the gist of it, like you know the regular stuff. So like for starters, we are playing the One Lovely. You don't need to play more of it, it is just the boss monster of the deck you always bounce it you want to keep it on the field we're playing the two lady i saw some lists playing only one of this i think this is extremely wrong uh the card definitely should be played at two you know i know i understand the theory of you don't always want to open it but if you open it is able to play with a bunch of heavier traps which you do like to play so we are playing two of it we are playing two arias uh, i know this is a lot of people say say oh you need to play three of this you want to see it as most possible i don't never think it's worth playing at three you know, the card's only really good if you have another trap that you can activate. And then it has to be, like, not a big welcome. So you really want to activate, like, welcome. You want to activate, like, imperm, which already can be activated from the hand. You can't use escape. You can't use, like, the, the black goat, which is, like, fine. I guess turn zero, you can use it. Um, but it's, like, whatever. You can also use it if you pitch it off of furniture. And, then, like, the rest of the traps also, you know, you use. You have to always open it up. It's only really good going first. Um, and then, of course, in the graver, it's really good as well, being level six and stuff like that. Then we also are playing the three Ariana. We are not playing the Ariane. Um, I think that card is just a win more card. You definitely do not need it. Um, you know, if you have, if you are not finding ways to send your copies of rollback in your hand, then you're not doing something right. You have your furniture cards. It definitely is not really the best. And like, you know, something a level four from the deck is either gonna be this or the dark um, statues. So it's like, really, you know, you can do that, but I would try to wanna see it. I wanna max on my chances. That's really it for the lady cards of the deck. Then for the furnitures, we are on the triple chandelier, the triple Storby Torby, and then the double Ku Clock. So the Ku Clock is the same reasoning as the copy of um, the Arias. I really don't want to see multiple of them. Like, you know, this is a really good card, but with Vistules in the format, you have to have at least two of them in the deck. Because then you, if you get one Vistule away, you have to, have to have another way to add it back, and then you're playing. You always want to have access to it, either that or the Ariane, which is fine, but uh, really Arias, I should say, not the Ariane. But like regardless, like this is a perfect ratio. You definitely do not want to play any less of these. Um, it's like you have always multiple cards in the hand. You could bump this up to three, but I just am liking it at two. And then for the other guy, we are playing the one Shavara. Um, my little Shawarma can only be played at one, therefore we're only playing it at one. What's also really cool is this is a level six. People do forget. It doesn't come up all the time. But when you have this and this on the field, you can overlay them for Caesar, which is important. It doesn't come up all the time, but it comes up like one in every 20 games. So to me, that's worth having, you know, a amazing card like that in your deck. Then for the hand traps, we actually are only playing three Nibiru. Um, we are also playing the three Imperm. I'll just drop them out now. Um, the reason why we're not playing Ash is like Ash is really good, yes. But it gives Fire King a, a fire and you don't really want to do that as well as it's very low impact. You know, obviously hitting the OSS is really good and hitting a bunch of cards like better have it. Um, but like in this, I really want to have like just the minimal. You could play Drolls as well, but Nib is extremely crazy when you're able to pair it up with any kind of furniture cards like we saw last week. Shadow Uzman playing against Matthew. Um, you know, it's a Sword Soul matchup. If you're able to like hack activate a copy of Nibiru and then you chain any copy of your furniture, you do then discard the Nib and then the token does not get summoned. Um, so you're just board wiping for essentially for free and then it's getting like set like a big welcome as well. And of course, Imperm is Imperm. Um, you know, you, it's a trap, it triggers Lady, it's really good. You can also reset it with Lovely if you have to. So it's like really good in the grind game. And something important is when you're not playing any of the other cards, you're not playing the talents. So talents is being kind of relevant in the format as well. So like you're really only playing like blow cards. You can obviously activate your imperm, but it's not like you're normally just like shotgunning your copies of like chandelier. You usually wait to the end phase to do it so you can play around cards like um, talents. So by having like a copy like of Nibiru, you know, it's not like you have to really dive weight or you're throwing away like a low impact. If you are getting, if they are nib, if you are in the range of getting nibbed, you've most likely done enough that it is worth getting nibbed. So if they have talents and they just have it at that point. Uh, so I just kind of want to explain that ratio while we're playing it just like this. And then we are playing the one Labyrinth, Labyrinth and the one Cobbler Grave. I'm actually opting in to play two Prosperity. I know this is a little bit weird, 
Um, I wanted to have a little bit more consistency in the deck, and of course, if people ash this, feel free. I have my big welcome. This can go live. Uh, I don't like Ash, so I'm playing Call of the Grave. Same reason why we're playing Unbranded. I am on this only because people tell me to play it. I don't love it, but it is a really good card as well. You know, being able to put something out from the hand, um, and then also getting your pops. Then for the traps, you know, the reason why we're all here. We're playing three big welcome, two little welcome. You don't need to play any less. Uh, I think that this is perfectly reasonable. Um, if you're not playing three big welcome, you're playing it wrong. I'll just put these here, yeah. We'll go over all the traps at the same time. I'm only playing two rollback. Now, this is where people will be like, what the heck? Why are we only playing two? So, yeah, this card is absolutely great, but I don't want to see it ever at two. Uh, as well as, you know, the deck is still very good. You can play it at three. I'm not saying that three is wrong. I found myself that I was seeing it a lot of times at three. So, I'm just trying it at two because we have other engines like the Unchained cards. And I'd rather see a trap that's gonna actually going to do something. Then we are playing the two escape, the two black goats, and that's going to be like what my extra copy of this is. You know, a lot of the times I have two furnitures and I have two of these. I don't want to discard two rollbacks. I want to discard a black goat. And then being able to activate the black goat, negate the effect, or even activate the rollback, sending this and then, or banishing this, activating the effect of black goat, and then banishing the black goat and having the effect to activate as well is just really nice. So I just want to have multiple copies. And of course the escape is for the copy of Shavara which is normally in the line that we end up going for. Um, but if you do that, you can't go for Caesar. So remember that, that this is going to be for your rage and you can pop, pop. And this is really good, especially for the follow-up. I guess you can't go for the Caesar. You have to go for the rage, I should say. Then for the other traps to round it off, we are playing the three traps of our choice. This is going to be the Punishment, the Ice Dragon's Prison, and the Dream Recurrent. So you can opt in to play either one of these as well. This is a really good card, this format. Um, as well as D barrier, but I'd, I'd find that if you want to play D barrier, you should decide it. And then for D this, you can do it. It's like essentially playing a shifter. Um, but like this is the case, you can do this instead. You can do this instead. Really, it depends what you want. Um, I I just really enjoy playing these three cards myself. Um, I'm a huge fan of punishment. I think that that card is absolutely crazy in the hands of the right people. Same thing with Ice Dragon's Prison. I feel like if you're playing these two cards here. And you can find like, oh, I'm not doing very good. I think that that's really just depending, obviously, about luck. But, you know, if you're not playing these, this is like really just explaining how you are as a player. You have to know the right places to Ice Dragon Prison. Same thing with Punishment. You can't just, on the first time, you can activate it, shotgun it, and then see what happens. And that's it for the main deck. Now moving on to the extra. This is a little bit lenient to, you know, depending on what variant you're playing, you have to play those cards. Remember, we are playing Prosperity as well as the Escape Package. And then we are playing other stuff like the punishment so depending on what variant you are playing it's going to change up your extra deck we are playing the relinquish anima people play into this sometimes and then so you just might have it if you feel like your opponent's not going to then you can just banish it off prosperity you don't really miss it then we're playing the one mutt raker this card's absolutely insane in this format you know you can link away and then you can summon out your copy of lovely i'm um, gonna go for your combos dark you're playing a dark deck then we're playing the yama as well as the rage cards absolutely crazy link away your stuff you know, we can't really play Unchained, but unfortunately we can go for it. Rage into SP Little Knight. And like Brian said to me the other day, there's no high like doing that. Um, you know, going for a Rage into an SP Little Knight, banishing another card on the field feels absolutely incredible. Especially when you go Escape, target this, blow this up. And then you're going to get the effect of Rage as well as Soul of, Soul of Rage and Yama. This add back any Fiend, people forget that a lot of the times. Um, and then Yama will be able to bring this out and destroy a card. So you essentially destroyed one card on the field with the escape, one card with the Yama, summoning back the Rage here. When they link, or when they special summon a monster here, you can go Rage into an SP Little Knight. So you removed three cards off of this two card combo. SP Little Knight activate, banishing a card from the graveyard or from the field. That's four cards. And when they activate something else, you can SP Little Knight once again, as well as adding you back a card as well, which is really important. So we have the SP Little Knight, and then we have, of course, the copy of Underworld. So a lot of the times you don't end up going for this, but it's always like a ha better habit case. You know, if you're playing against Raid Raptor, it is kind of hard for them to like, it's just kind of hard for you to out their board. So having like this, and then if you find a way to like link it off and then reloop it, it can be really nice. Um, there are cards that we are playing that can let you do that, so important to note. Um, and then of course, having this blanket summon just negate everything is really nice, especially with your furniture, is just being able to summon themselves to the field. That's it for your link monsters. 
Now for your Synchro, we're only playing one Chaos Angel. You don't need any more than one. Um, never really banish it off your Prosperity, and you'll be fine. Then we are playing the Typhon, the Caesar, as well as the Dweller. Um, Dweller doesn't really come up that often in a lot of cases if you're not playing the other level four. Um, but it can be nice, especially if you're going for it with Mutt Raker, or if you're going to go for the copy of Yama. Because sometimes you can blow up your own cards if you already have Escape, then you can summon it out in the grind game, go for a Dweller. You never really go for Caesar unless you think that the Rage is not going to be doing very good. In that case, like, you know, if you can't break their board, you can't OTK them. A lot of the times you can, like, actually add back a copy of the um, Caesar, or add a copy back of the Shorma. Set, like, a copy of whatever trap that you don't really need, even if it's, like, a Welcome. And then you can, like, pop your Welcome that's face down. Um, summon this out, or summon out the Rage, or not the, my bad, not the Rage, summon out the Shorma. And then if they have like the Arias, you can just go into this. And like if you make this after turn zero, or after turn one, your opponent's not cracking this board. Like with the Caesar and whatever else you have, like you're going to be winning this, especially after the board's already established. Just absolutely crazy. And then for the rest of the cards, this is going to be our punishment package. I'll be explaining the reasons why. We're playing the Bufalipasis. That's because we're playing the Garua. You can send either or, but a lot of the times. Um, you want to be able to destroy something with bigger attacks, so you send that. Then we are playing the uh, Befferment as well as the Entis. So the reason why I'm, I'm playing this one over, like, I'll just show you the options. You can play either of these, but a lot of the times, like, we are seeing the Bestials in the format. Your opponent's going to be really saving their Bestial for a copy of Lovely. So a lot of your Lovely gets banished. There's really no way for you to recur it. So having this in your... Uh, in your extra deck, you can actually send this, blow up a card, and then actually be able to summon this back out by banishing. So like you just have another way to get your lovely back in the worst case scenario. Um, you can do the same thing from Graveyard, but you have lots of ways of summoning back from the Graveyard, including Big Welcome. So I just found that this card is not as worth it as, I guess, this is not as worth as this one, which is like gonna be kind of a contingency plan, going back for that banish. And then for Entis, like, you know, a lot of the times I want to pop a back row. I don't want to add it to card. Like if this also is a face-up card, um, that's the issue. If this card said any card, I'd be fine with it. But unfortunately, um, this just targets any card and destroys it, which is fine. You know, this is good if you want to bounce back a copy of, like, Fire King Island. Or I guess not Fire King Island. You want to bounce back against the Fire King deck. Then you can, like, bounce back a copy of Flamberge. Um, but at that point, like, if they already have Kieran, they can just destroy it from the hand. It's not really great. So we're just playing Entis because in the general matchup, blowing up a face down card or a copy of the Fire King um, Island is really nice if you have an already established board. And if you play it correctly, you can even like destroy a copy of Poplar in the back row, which just triggers, or just not trigger their cards and they get, like, lose like their OSS. Other than that, that's really it for the deck profile. I'm not gonna be showing off the side deck because the side deck does vary depending on what where you are playing. Um, options you can play is obviously your D barrier and other cards as well. Um, but if you guys watch any of the videos, you guys will see that I'll be playing with this deck and then you guys will be seeing the side deck included in those, which is just always forever changing depending on what our local scene's like. Regardless, hope you've been watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and see more content like this. Hope to stay safe. Peace.